Hi guys, Mike in the woods here. In previous videos, I've talked about specific aspects of skate packing on an electric skateboard, but I thought it was time to tie it all together and make a video on how to actually plan a skate packing trip. So things like your route, battery charging stops, overnight accommodations, gear for board maintenance and repair, and lastly, what to do in the worst case scenario where your board just outright crafts itself in the middle of your trip. This video assumes you're at least a little bit familiar with traditional backpacking. Uh, if you're not, Homemade Wanderlust has actually done an excellent beginner's guide, which I'll link down in the description. So a quick reminder to subscribe if you're new to the channel, and let's hit the ground running. Uh, rolling. The kind of electric skateboard you have will play a role in what type of skate packing trips you can actually do. If you have a board with street wheels like what I got, then you're limited to roads, paved bike trails, and very, very light duty off-road tracks, things like hard packed dirt or very fine gravel. I mean, it's fine if there's short off-road sections of your route, you can just carry your board for these areas, or if you really need to, and the ground allows it, pull it behind you like a sled. Just be careful of how much you need to deal with this as it will cut into your daily distance and it'll tire you out very quickly because of the heavier backpack and carrying the weight of the board. If you have a board that has off-road wheels, then you've opened up a lot more backcountry trails, things like bikepacking trails, although you'll usually have less range with all-terrain wheels, comparatively, than you would with street wheels, especially off-road. Obviously, you need to plan charging stops into your route. Link up at the top of the screen for a video I did for a more in-depth look at places to charge. You can sync up some of your charging stops with your overnight accommodations. If you're at something like a motel or a campsite with electrical outlets at or at least nearby your campsite, but that's not always viable. Like if you're backcountry camping or stealth camping, somewhere you're technically not supposed to, you'll likely also have to stop about midway through the day to charge as well. All in, I would plan for no more than two charging stops day, one overnight, and one halfway through the day. This should give you a good balance between time spent charging and time spent, you know, actually moving forward. I would also recommend using fast chargers if you can to speed up the charging process, as well as having one charger for every battery. Because of the weight of your pack and environmental factors, I would add a 30% buffer to your expected range. If you know you can normally do 20 kilometers on your board on a single charge, plan your charging stops about 15.3 kilometers apart, or a total expected daily distance of 30 kilometers. If you want to be able to do longer distances per day, you'll need a, either a board with a really large battery, or a setup like what I've got, where I can hot swap my batteries in a matter of like 30 seconds. It's not the end of the world if you run out of battery though, you can still hike normally by carrying or pulling your board behind you until you get to your next charging spot. Next up, you obviously need places to spend the night. Really, you have three main choices here. You've got camping, you've got commercial paid accommodation, and you've got private residential accommodation. The first one, camping, is pretty straightforward. Find somewhere to pitch your tent for the night. You can go with a paved campsite, which might be beneficial if you get access to amenities, including the ever-present need for power for charging, or for more wilderness-style camping, especially if you're very low on funds. You can backcountry camp in places that are free or comparatively inexpensive, such as general use crown land. The second option, commercial paid accommodation, is really just a fancy umbrella term for hotels, motels, hostels, and any other paid temporary accommodation owned by a business. This can add up to quite a lot of money if you use these too frequently on a longer trip, but it can be an occasional morale booster every few days on a longer trip, especially if you've been slumming it in the woods in between. It gives you a chance to take refuge from the nasty weather, have a bit of privacy, charge up all your electronics and your board's batteries, and get a good night's sleep. The third option, private residential accommodation, is places made available by apps by private homeowners. Airbnb is probably the most well-known, but there's more backpacking specific apps like couch surfing and warm showers. A lot of these don't even involve the overnight stay being paid for, though I do recommend a nice gift or a very good thank you for the hosts. On top of your ordinary backpacking gear, you also need to bring skatepacking specific gear to maintain or repair your board. Riding many kilometers a day for potentially weeks on end can really play hell on your board, so it's very important to be prepared for low-hanging fruit failure modes and general maintenance with your board. A skate tool is the most obvious one. After every day or two, you should just go around and give a twist to all your bolts to make sure they haven't come loose. Obviously, you'll also need it if you need to swap out a part. If you have a belt drive board like I do, some spare belts are a very good idea as they have a limited lifespan and are probably the most likely thing to go. If you have pneumatic tires, you'll want a spare inner tube or two plus a portable bikepacking style air pump. 
maybe a tire patch kit. An extra set of bearings might be a good addition too, in case you cake yours up with muck or you crack a bearing, especially if it's a longer trip. If you have more than one battery, it's smart to have one charger per battery so you can charge them all simultaneously, along with a small splitter, so you only need to source a single outlet. And finally, not something that's really mandatory, but just something to consider, some sort of solar charging setup for backup emergency charging if you get stuck in the middle of nowhere and you can spend a day or two charging all your batteries. And the last planning consideration is what to do if your board just <laughs> craps itself. It's one thing if, say, one of your motors dies, you can disconnect the broken one and limp to a nearby town to figure out your next move. But if you suffer catastrophic board failure, things like your deck snapping, a truck breaking, or your ESC going boom, it can put you in a sketchy situation, especially if you're in the middle of nowhere. If this does happen, you'll most likely be within reasonable distance of civilization due to your reliance on the power grid for charging. Your goal in this situation is to get somewhere more stable where you can sort out the situation, whether that be a public campground, nearby town, town, etc. Somewhere you can post up for a few days as you deal with the situation. If you can hike you and your broken board right to the spot, great. If not, can you hike to a nearby road? Can you call a cab or an Uber or maybe hitchhike? Once you're somewhere that you can set up for a few days, is your board repairable in a reasonable amount of time? Like for instance, can you get fast shipping to you with replacement parts in like a day or two? If so, maybe it's worthwhile to wait it out and fix your board so you can continue on with your trip. If not, at this point, it's time to pull the plug and bail on your trip. If you have access to nearby public transportation, either by hiking or by getting a ride from some kind stranger, you can make your way back that way, or you can set up an emergency contact before you start your trip that you can call in this exact situation to come pick you up and bring you back. And if someone does do this for you, buy them all the beer. So to sum all this up for you in a tiny TLDR, plan a route that takes into account your board's terrain capabilities and charging stops, consider charging in your overnight accommodation planning, bring gear for board maintenance and basic repairs, and have a bug out plan if your board explodes mid-trip. I have all sorts of videos about skate packing, including my own trip videos. There's a link to the playlist in the description. Skate packing is really just normal backpacking with longer daily distances and a reliance on battery charging. If you have any backpacking experience, then you've already got a good set of foundations. If you're new to the channel, I combine fun, futuristic technology with traditional outdoors experiences. Check out my other videos and consider subscribing if that's your thing. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one.